Okay, we went, uh, we're getting into the graphs of these now. So we're still going to do the same information as before. So if you want to review, uh, we've already reviewed uh, how to do this information already, the intercepts and the asymptotes. So if you're unsure about that, you want to go back, check the notes in that section. Okay, um, but we're going to go ahead and now do the same information as before. We're now going to add in a graph for this section. So first, we want to find the intercept. So this, this is the same information we talked about before. If you want to find the x-intercept, again, the top one's going to equal zero. x plus one equals zero. And so we get x is equal to negative one. So negative one is going to be the x-intercept. Now we want to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where you put in a zero. I'm going to use the original one, just put it back into that one. Zero plus one over zero squared minus nine. Uh, then I get negative one ninth I'll get as a result when I simplify it. So that's what's going to go in here, negative one ninth. That's my y-intercept. Next, I want to find my vertical and my horizontal asymptotes. For the vertical asymptote, that's always the bottom one is going to be set equal to zero. x squared minus nine, that equals zero. If I solve for that, I get x is plus or minus three. So you do need the x equals as part of your answer. So x is equal to plus three, x is equal to minus three. Then I want to also find the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that's going to be the HA here, the horizontal asymptote. So horizontal asymptote, we got to take a look at the, the rules uh, for this. So the rules talk about the highest power on top and the highest power on the bottom of that fraction. The highest power on the top is considered your N. In this case, my n is less than my m, which is the highest power on the bottom. So because of that, uh, we're going to use, this is really rule number one. Rule number one says that automatically, highest power on top is less than the highest power on the bottom. Automatically, you're going to put y equals zero for the answer. So now my horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. This information that you have right here this is always the same preliminary information that you always want to find first before you graph these. This is going to give us an idea of how the graph is actually set up and then from there we just have to find a couple more details. So what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to the graph. So hopefully you have all this down. I'm going to erase this and go on to the graph. Uh, so when you do the graph, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, put down the intercepts. So it crosses that negative one would be right there. It also crosses that negative one ninth, which would be right here. So I know the graph is going to cross in those two places. I have a vertical asymptote at three and negative three. So here's negative three and here is positive three. Those are my vertical asymptotes. I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Now y equals zero is the x-axis. So I'll indicate that by putting a couple dotted lines this direction just to show that that line continues in both directions. We now have the graph that's split up into three different regions. We have this region on the outside of that vertical, we have a middle portion, and we have an end portion there. We need to figure out what the graph looks like. So on the ends, on these two ends, the graph can only look like one of two, it'll go one of two ways. The graph is either going to go like this, or the graph is going to go like this. The one on the end here either goes like that or goes like this. It's never going to be both. So we have to choose. It'll either be one or the other. We have a choice of drawing it above here or down below. On the end here, you have a choice of drawing it above or below. So again, we don't know which one it's going to be right now. So in order to do that, we need to use some test points. The test points are going to determine where the graph actually gets drawn, whether it's drawn above or if it's drawn below. The test points you're going to pick, you're just going to pick test points that are in this particular region. So I want to test the point to the left of that uh, vertical. I want to test another point to the right of this vertical. So I'm testing, what I have is I have a, I'm testing x is equal to negative 4. I'm also testing x is equal to 4. One to the left and also one uh, to the right. I'm going to put it into the original equation and that's going to tell me the y coordinate, and I'll actually have a point that I can plot, and it'll tell me which where the graph is actually lies. So I'm going to do y equals negative one plus one, negative four plus one over negative four squared 
minus 9. And we're going to work this out. We get negative 4 plus 1. That's going to be negative 3. On the bottom, we get 16 minus 9, which is going to be negative 3 sevenths. The actual coordinate is going to be negative 4 and negative 3 sevenths. I'm going to plot that one. Negative 4 and negative 3 sevenths will be about right here. So that tells me that the graph is going to have to lie in this section. You will always see the graph. The graph is always going to follow the horizontal. It will hit that point. It's going to curve and it has to follow the vertical. It always does it. That's the characteristic of these kind of graphs. It follows the horizontal, then it follows the vertical. You always will see that. We just didn't know if it was drawn up here or down below there. So now that I've done the algebra with it, that uh, determines now that the graph has to be drawn down below like this. So now I need to check this one. It's either going to be drawn above or below again. So that's why I have to use another test point. I'm going to use this time x is equal to 4. We're going to put this one again into the original one. So I have y equals 4 plus 1 over 4 squared minus 9. This gives us 5 sevenths. So 5 sevenths is a, another point on the line. So we have 4 and 5 sevenths is the actual coordinate that's going to be on the graph itself. I will plot that one. So 4 and 5 sevenths means a little bit less than 1. It means the dot's going to be right there. That tells me that the graph itself is going to have to look like this. It's going to go through that point. It'll follow the vertical curve and follow the horizontal. So now I have everything complete there except for the middle portion. Now the middle portion, when you have two vertical asymptotes like we have here, the middle portion is always going to be one of four shapes, and I'll draw those here. It's going to look like uh, upside down U, uh, U or a U. It'll look like a positive cube or it'll look like a negative cube. This is what, these are the only four shapes that this could look like in between the two vertical asymptotes. So we can pick the one that that matches the information we have provided. So a lot of times your intercepts are going to give you some more information about what this will look like in the middle. Now if you're not sure what it looks like, you could always verify it by picking a couple test points. We could test, for instance, negative 2 or we could test positive 2 and that would tell us a little bit more about what shape it's going to be. However, we always know that for, for graphs like this, it's going, where we have two vertical asymptotes, the graphs will resemble one of these four shapes. So therefore, because it goes through these two points, the only one it could match is going to be this one right here. This is going to be our negative cube graph. It can't be this one. So if you're thinking that it could be the parabola, the problem with that is it will come down, it would hit this, but then it would have to go back up again. If it goes back up, it would cross the x-axis, which means that we would have another x-intercept there, which we don't have in this case. We only have just these two provided. So it's going to look like this. The way it works is it will follow this vertical one. It's going to curve and hit these two points. And then the graph is going to curve again and go down here and follow the vertical asymptote. So therefore, this is what your completed graph is going to look like. We have the two verticals here. So all three of these pieces, that has to be drawn for your graph. That completes the whole entire thing. So a lot of times, sometimes we'll forget and they won't do the middle part. That does exist because I can, I, I can pick test numbers here. I already know that, that the line has to be there because I have those intercepts. So something would have to actually occur between those two vertical lines. So that's why that's really important. You need to have all three pieces of your graph. Uh, this first part, again, above or below only. This one's above or below. We determine that by these test points. And then finally, we, with these four graphs here, we were able to find the one that best matches the one in between the two vertical asymptotes.